Hey guys, Jared here, and welcome to part one of how to make a game like Pong using Sprite Kit. We all know what Pong is, so there's not much explanation there, but before we get started, I just want to give a huge thank you to the team of ArcaHack, Elantis, Rob, and Jack. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to go ahead and organize that Google document. It's very helpful. But without any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so first thing we're going to do is just open up Xcode, create a new Xcode project, and then this, of course, is going to be a game. We're going to be using Sprite Kit to build this game, so go ahead and select that. Now go ahead, click next, and then after this, just go ahead and take your product name. I'm just going to go ahead and call it Pong. With your language, Swift, game technology, you want to make sure that's set to Sprite Kit, as that's what we're working with. And yeah, that's it. Go ahead, click next and create. And there is our project. Now for a beginner project, I find it very fitting to use the Sprite Kit Scene Builder to build most of the game. So that's what we're gonna be doing today uh, instead of programmatically building all of our objects. Although in future tutorials with other games, we'll definitely be going over how to add objects to the scene programmatically. But in Pong, it's very simple. So I figure let's just go ahead and use the Sprite Kit Scene Builder for this. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go into our game scene.swift and we're just gonna delete everything inside of this did move to view. And then we're also gonna delete everything down here, like so. And then we also wanna delete our labels. We're pretty much just emptying this out so that we have our did move to view and our update. That's pretty much all we're gonna be using in there. Now let's go ahead and go into our game scene.sks or our sprite kit scene builder right here. And let's go ahead and build our app. And then now we're gonna go ahead and add our paddles. So in order for us to add these paddles, I'm gonna be using a color sprite and then we're just gonna go ahead and first off, I'm gonna change the color scheme a little bit. So we have the attributes inspector. We're gonna go ahead and change the color to just a white color. And then we'll come right back to this paddle, but you can also change the background color. So if you wanna change it to a white color or a black color, you can do so. I feel like a nice grayish color looks good. So I'm gonna keep it that way. So now with the paddle, I'm also gonna change the size of this paddle. So for a width, I'm gonna set this equal to 200 or something like that. And then with the height of this, I'm gonna set this equal to 30. I feel like that's a pretty good paddle size. And yeah, I think that's a pretty good looking paddle. So now let's go ahead and position this properly inside of our scene. Now, in order to do this, let's keep in mind this little cross in the middle here. So with this, if you've done any basic calculus, this is essentially your different quadrants. So you have your positive quadrants, your negative quadrant, and then a little bit of mixture on both of those. So this is your x value, this is your y value, this is the x negative, this is the x positive, this is the y negative, and this is the y positive. So if we were to go ahead and click on this paddle right here, you can see that the position is at 0 0.171. We just wanna go ahead and set that right in the center, so I'm gonna set that to zero. And then for a y value, you can set this to whatever you want as well. I feel like negative 550 might be good. And then now we also want to have an enemy paddle. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, copy that, paste it, and then it's going to be the exact same size. So now I'm just going to set the y value a little bit differently. So now this is just going to be a positive 550 so that it is on the exact opposite of the screen. And then also with the x value here, I'm just gonna set that equal to zero. And then yeah, there we have it. We have both of those paddles set up. Now the next thing I wanna do is give both of them names so that we can reference them later on inside of programming. So to do this, you just click on that bottom paddle. We're gonna go ahead and give this the name of our main. I think that's a good name. And then up with our top pedal up here with the name, we're just gonna go ahead and set that equal to our enemy. And yeah, that's going to allow us to edit the positioning of them inside of programming later on. And then another thing we want to do is in order for the ball to interact with both of these paddles, we need to add a physics body. And with Sprite Kit Scene Builder, it's very simple. So we're just gonna go down here to the physics definition. We're gonna go to the uh, body type right here and we're gonna add a bounding rectangle. And with this, we're just gonna go ahead and turn off dynamic. And basically what that means is with our paddle on top here, if it hits that ball, we don't want it to move in any way. It's just gonna keep going on its steady course. So we're turning off dynamic because what dynamic does is if a ball hits that, it actually makes that paddle move. So we just wanna go ahead and turn that off. Allows rotation, turn that off, and affected by gravity for obvious reasons. We don't want it to be affected by gravity, so we're turning that off. And then with our friction down here, in order to ensure that our game runs perfectly, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that friction right off and then our restitution, I'm gonna turn that off as well. Uh, we don't want any interference with the ball. It's gonna just keep bouncing on its merry way, no matter what it does. Basically with the friction and the restitution, the restitution is the bounciness and the friction is, you know, friction. <laughs> 
And yeah, that's pretty much all you need. And then now down here with our category mask, collision mask, field mask, and contact mask. So with the category and mask of our paddle, there's no real reason to differentiate between the top paddle and the bottom paddle in terms of category masks and stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and set my category mask equal to 1. My collision mask, I'm going to set this equal to 2. This is who are you going to collide with. And 2 is going to be the category mask of our ball. And with our field mask down here, uh, this is if you have like spring fields, radial gravity fields, all that stuff. Uh, we're not going to be messing with that, so I'm just going to go ahead and set that equal to zero. And with our contact mask, again, who are you contacting? So I'm going to set this equal to two as well. And then now we need to go down here to our bottom paddle and just do the exact same thing that we did to our top. And with the category mask, again, there's no real reason to differentiate between the two paddles, so I'm going to set this equal to one. Collision mask of two, and there you have it. Now let's go ahead and add the ball onto our scene. So in order for us to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and add another color sprite onto the scene. Uh, we'll put it directly in the center, so I'm going to go up here to the positioning. I'm going to set the Y equal to zero. And right now this is a square, so let's just go ahead and add a texture of a ball onto our scene. So in order for us to do this, just go into your image editor of choice, click on that. I'm going to create a new document. With the width and height here, I like it to be double the size of our ball, so let's go ahead and figure out what the size of our ball is. I think if we make it 30 by 30, uh, that should make a good ball. No, that's, oh no that, that's good. So again, go back over here to your document and you're gonna make it two times that. So I'm gonna say 60 and 60. This is just so that you don't have any pixelation going on. And then just go ahead and create a circle inside of your scene. I'm gonna make it a white circle. So there's my circle, and as you can see, the background is actually transparent. So I'm just going to go ahead and say File, Export. And in order to maintain that transparency, you have to make sure that it's a PNG. So just go ahead and say Next, and export it as whatever you want. And there is our ball. So now let's go ahead and add this into our project. So I'm just going to go ahead, shrink this down. We're going to go over here to our Assets.xc Assets, and just put that right in there. And we're going to move this over to the two times position. That way we maintain that perfect pixelation. Now let's go back over here to our game scene.sks. Let's move this up a bit. And then now click on the square right here. And we're going to go over here to our texture. And we're just going to go ahead and set that equal to our ball. And there we have our ball. So with this ball, I'm also going to go over here to the sprite. I'm going to give it the name of ball. We're good to go there. And then now down here, I also want it to have a physics definition. And then also with the ball, we want this to be bouncing off everything. So we need to add a physics definition to this as well. So with our body type, we're just going to go ahead and set this equal to a bounding circle. We're going to keep it dynamic. We're going to turn off allows rotation. We're going to turn off the affected by gravity. With the friction, we're going to set this equal to zero. But with our restitution here, we're going to set this equal to one. We want this to be as bouncy as possible. There's nothing that's stopping it from bouncing it. And then with our category mask, as you can remember, we set this equal to two earlier, so just put that as that. And with our collision mask, we'll set this equal to one. We want this to be colliding with the paddles, which have a category mask of one. Field mask, we don't want this to be affected by any fields as of yet. We might do that in the future. And then with our contact mask, again, I'm just gonna set this equal to the paddles, so this will be one. And also one thing I wanna point out is if you zoom in real close, you can see that there's this little blue ring around our ball and actually around our paddles as well. And this is your physics body. So that's your physics body being applied to that ball. So once you see that little blue ring, don't worry about it. It's your physics body. Now, one thing you do want to worry about is if you have the body type set to the wrong thing, let's go ahead and make this a rectangle. That's how it's going to appear. So you want to make sure that you have that properly done. And there you have it. So now we have our paddles and our ball set up in Pong. Now let's go ahead into our assistant editor here and let's go ahead and program stuff. So the first thing I want to do inside of my game scene.swift is I'm going to go ahead and create all of these objects so that we can edit them later. So I'm just going to go ahead and say var ball will be equal to, I'm just going to go ahead and set this equal to an SK sprite node. And then we'll set this up to this ball in just a minute inside of our div move to view. We'll do that with all of our objects. But first we need to actually create the variable before we set them up. So now I'm also going to say var my enemy will be equal to an sk sprite node as well. Open close parentheses. And then we also want to have var my person, or actually I called him main, will be equal to an sk sprite node, open close parentheses. And then now in order to connect these up with our project, we need to go into our dude move to view. So we're just gonna go ahead and say ball will be equal to myself, 
dot child node with name as you can see right here and then of course we gave it the name of ball and we're just going to go ahead and do this with all three of those so I'm just going to go ahead and copy that three times and then we'll just change the names and then it's going to give you this error right here so if we expand this real quick it's going to give you this error that says it definitely needs to be as an SK sprite node so just go ahead and add that at the end there uh, essentially this is just working with optionals we're pulling from a random value that's on here so it's not too sure whether that child node is just an SK node or an SK sprite node we, we need to work with SK sprite nodes because they actually have much more functionality when in terms of gaming so we're just converting that child node that we're grabbing to an SK sprite node so first thing we want to do is with our ball we're gonna go ahead and make our ball impulse so it's going to start moving in a direction and actually start the game so in order for us to do this we're just going to say ball dot physics body we already have a physics body applied to this so we can use that dot apply impulse and we're going to apply an impulse of a cg vector so i'm just going to go ahead and set this equal to cg vector open parentheses and then you're going to give it the direction x value and the direction y value so with this if you have negative 30 you're going to be going in this direction and then if you have a negative 30 on the y value here, you're gonna start going in this direction. Just think of quadrants. That's just how it's gonna be working. Uh, with the bigger the number, the more powerful the impulse is going to be. So I feel like negative 30 is a little bit too high. Let's go ahead and set that equal to 20. Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind is you wanna keep these numbers same to a point. So you wanna have it 20, 20, or 20, negative 20. You wanna have it kind of the same number. And what this allows it to do is that it launches at a 45 degree angle. So that is how Pong is played. And if you actually change this to like 2060, it makes it a completely different angle and it makes the game not as Pong-like. So if you wanna do it that way, that's perfectly fine. But I like it having going at a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that equal to 2020. And then another thing I wanna do is with our ball, it's gonna be bouncing all around the scene, but the scene itself does not have a border yet. So let's go ahead and add a border. So we're just gonna say, let my border equal sk physics body open parentheses and then this is going to be the edge loop from and then we're going to give it the cg path of myself dot frame so it's just going to create a border all around the frame of the scene and then also with this border we want to edit a few things so we're going to say border dot friction will be equal to zero we don't want any friction but we do want restitution in this case because we do want it to be bouncing off the wall so we're just going to go ahead and say my border dot restitution will be equal to one and then lastly that's all we have for our border so we're just going to apply this to our scene so we're going to say self dot physics body will be equal to my border and voila now let's go ahead and build and run this and check out what we have and there is our ball bouncing around our scene, but one thing you'll notice right now is that it's actually slowing down. So the reason for this is you actually have linear dampening and also angular damping. So we're just gonna go ahead and set those equal to zero as well on our ball. So click on your ball, go over here to linear dampening and angular dampening, and let's go ahead and build around this again, and we should be good. And there is our ball, and there is no sign of it slowing down now. Now let's go ahead and continue on and the next thing you want to do is make it so when we click on the screen it moves our paddle to the X position of our finger. So to do this, this is very simple. We're just going to go ahead and say touches began and then we're also going to add another function called touches moved. Those are the two functions that we're going to be using in this case. And then also down here inside of the update, another thing I want to do is with the uh, enemy player up here, we wanted this to be kind of moving along with the ball, but with a little bit of a delay. So in order for us to do this, very simple, we're just going to go ahead and say enemy dot, and then we're just going to say run, run in action. This is going to be SK action uh, dot move two, and then we're just going to move to the X value, and we'll set this equal to our ball dot position dot x so we're just going to move it to the x position of, of our ball and then with your duration here this is going to affect how hard of a person it is to play so if you want to have it at 0 0.5 that's a pretty hard person to play so you might want to keep it at like one second i think that's a good place but going back to moving our own person we need to go back up here to the touches began and first thing we want to do is determine the location of where I touch the screen. So in order for us to do this, we have a set of UI touches here. This is all the touches that occur when your finger touches it, and we just need to grab one of those touches. So we're just going to go ahead and say for touch in touches, we're just grabbing one of those single touches, 
and we're going to say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Then we can go ahead and grab the location of that touch. So we can say let location equal. I'm just going to go ahead and set this equal to my touch dot location in. And then this is going to be a location in an SK node. Really, you just need to set that equal to self. And then that's just going to grab the location of your finger inside of the view. And then now we need to go ahead and do the exact same thing that we did right down here, just with our main person. So we're going to say main dot run in SK action dot move to. And with this, we're going to move it to the X position of our location dot X. For the duration here, you can set this to whatever you want. I like there to be a slight delay. So I'm going to keep it as 0.2. I think that makes a fun gameplay. And then with our touches moved, we want this to happen when the person's dragging their finger as well. So I'm just going to copy everything that we have right there, move it down there, and voila! Let's go ahead, build and run our project, and let's see what we have. So as you can see, the game's going to start loading, and I'm able to move my paddle. And as you can see, the enemy is also moving along. And there you have it, that was very simple, easy to set up. We now have a pretty fully functioning game of Pong. The next thing we need to do is, of course, make it so people can win their scores, so on and so forth. There's a lot more stuff that we can do to this, so if you have any suggestions, be sure to leave it in the comment section down below. Anyway, that's it. If you found this helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.